biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. Hello and welcome to the Daily Atheist Morning Show. It is Saturday. We made it to Sci-Fi Saturday once again. It is Saturday. Um, Saturday, the 13th of June, 2020. And this morning, uh, I have got, of course, Miss Leanne Lord joining me. I love Leanne. Here's Leanne. Good morning, Leanne. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. I can hear you. Awesome. Everything is going good. I hope you guys, uh, I hope you all like the new uh, Sci-Fi Saturday intro that I have created. Uh, you know, it's kind of long, so it gave us a little more time to get our rose in a duck, if you know what I mean, before the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where I time everything perfectly, you know, exactly nine minutes before the show, I got to do this and do that and flip that switch. I love the, I love the organization. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, so how are you doing? Did you have a good week? Yeah, it was pretty, it was decent. You know, it was fine. Yeah, yeah, just another week. Are you you're, you're not in quarantine now? Are you still in quarantine or how's it working in your area? We're they've lifted almost everything here in New Mexico, I think. So Really? Yeah, like, we're every, everybody's out and about doing the thing. No, no, we're still we're still in phase 1, um which is some um construction, curbside delivery, some retail but still curbside delivery, but they have not lifted the stay-at-home order yet. Oh, really? So, yeah. Yeah, not that anybody's listening. Because New Jersey did, and that's right next door. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, come get your Corona, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I don't know. It's just I, I'm I'm kind of housebound all the time anyway myself. You know, I work from home and right. you know never go anywhere pretty much. So because that's just me. <laughs> I right, think I would right. do really well on one of those long term um, space exploration things. You know, where people all oh, people would go insane after a few months. I'm like hell no, that's right up. To, just give me plenty of entertainment, movies to watch. Yeah. You know, nerding to be done, and I'll be happy. I usually get by pretty well. I talk to myself most of the time. So I don't really need other well, people. Well, that's, that's an interesting side effect of working from home. Mm -mm. Yes. And I think, yeah, you, you don't realize that you're doing it until you get back into a setting with other people and you catch yourself <laughs> bumbling. I'm like, oh, shoot. And then they know, oh, you work at home, don't you? Mm, yes. Because <laughs> yes. you say your to-do list out loud and whatever you forgot out loud. Or, gee, I'm hungry. I mean, you just sort of narrate your life. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> work, work at home. You know, before we go too far, I want to ask you a question that I don't know how this has slipped my mind. I, I know you have a Patreon, but do you have a merch store? Do you have do you have Leanne merch? Um, I well, it's my books, um, which are I've I've written well several books, but two of which are available either hardcover, uh, well, uh, paperback from me mm -hmm. uh, you get, that you can get from VeryFunnyLady.com, and uh, you can also uh, order them on Amazon if you are a Kindle reader. So. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, um, there's there's other options for merch that are really easy and free, and I'll talk to you about those later. I just had a question over here. I wanted to ask you is if you knew merch, and I might help you with some merch ideas. Oh, Not cool. books, shirts, shirts, and shirts, and oh, well, yeah, that I did kind of merch. Ages ago, and then I recently re released um, one of my comedy albums. You know, through mm -hmm. C Baby, whatever, and that's streaming. Um, you know, any and everywhere now. Yeah. Well, you know, back in the day, shirts were hard. You had to do a lot of stuff to them and you had to buy a great many of them and you had to do yeah. stuff. And now you don't have to do any of that. You just go on the Internet and you tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it. And you put up a little picture or whatever your slogan. You could take a little jokes out of your book and put it on a shirt as a slogan and then tick, you're done. And you don't pay nothing until somebody buys it. And they, you don't even pay it. They buy it and just give you the money that you made. So it's that easy. It really is. I, I like the sound of that yeah. business model. I wouldn't lie to you right here in front of everybody. <laughs> oh, I know you wouldn't. I know you I mean, and I, I you know, I, I know <laughs> I've done some research in the last year or two, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, this really has changed. But, you know, again, yeah. not, it hasn't been at the top of the to do list, but it probably should be now. Just, a, just a thought. You know, I shouldn't talk this sort of shop because, you know, it's not, it's not sci fi nerding. I need to, I need to move back to the sci fi nerding thing. So, um, okay. but, but before we do that, if we may, I, I need mm -hmm. to ask you, you did some stand up this week, or, well, you did some shows this week on the interwebs. I did. Didn't you? How'd they go? How'd it go? You see, my mind is blanking, right? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, well, the coffee I hasn't did. set in. Well, here's what's weird. I did what I was supposed to do on Monday. And mm. um, 
even one of the other comments in the show is someone who I recommended. It was a fundraiser um, for the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. And show's going great. It's a Monday show. Uh, we get to me and my internet goes out. No. No. Which I don't understand because I have an Ethernet cable. I have two Ethernet cables. And it's like, what the hell happened? Oh, uh, and they kept I kept trying to get back in. They kept, you know, they kept waiting. Every time I got in, they were like, Leanne, and then I was gone. Oh. <laughs> and so I'll dress up and literally know where to go. I didn't uh. do my show. I'm sorry. So that was That's... Monday. Yeah. And the reason, the reason why that slipped my mind is because I had therapy on Tuesday to help me forget the Monday. So thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Bringing you know, that like, trauma back to the present. Right, exactly. I understand. Right. I understand. You know, I take man. these things personally. I mean, everybody gets it. You know, tech fails, but it's like, ah, oh, yeah. you know. And the then universe. I, yeah, the universe. And then I had a show last night. I'm still standing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the name of the show, Luz Michelle. Uh, it's so funny. I had worked with her just recently, like this year, mm -hmm. in a physical setting, and then the world fell apart. And she's one of those people that keeps it moving, you mm -hmm. know. And I think you came to I, the one of the first shows I done was I did was her yeah. show. You were there. That was the one with the sound effects. Mm -hmm. so they're still doing it. They're building, growing, awesome. and they've actually switched over to Streamyard. Okay, that uh, makes it easy. Like, yeah, they like it better, and it was fun. I got to work with uh, a new comic who I don't know who's very funny. Um, uh, Usama is his name. So funny. And then a friend of mine, um, she was on the show last night, too. So, so it's weird. I log in, we do the, the sound check, and I'm busy going, hey, hi, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I did a third. Oh, let me uh, close that out of this. Yeah, because you're busy. Yeah, no, I did a well. A friend invited me to do a game show okay. uh, called The Honey Zoomers. It's a dating show, and I, you know, doing her favor, I said, sure, why not? Um, it's, there was three in this episode: three female, female comedians and a male, a male, you know, asking us questions, you know, sorting who, who he likes. Um, yeah, spoiler alert: I won. <laughs> <laughs> How? And I was like, "Yay, that's great!" And then they go, "Okay, yeah, we got to set you guys up on a on a, a, a virtual date." I'm like, "There's more." <laughs> like I thought this was—I don't know what I was thinking because I guess I, I never really watched dating shows mm. or reality yeah. shows or anything like that. And I'm like, "Are y'all serious? There's more? I can't just say I won and move on." <laughs> yeah, I've never like, seen anything like that. No. So the first virtual date I will have hmm. in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. So I'm sorry, I was kind of running the show for a second. So you went on a show and actually somehow got into a virtual date that you have not yet gone on. Is that I what I understand? Yet. I have, yeah, I have not. But yet. you did win. So well, you won. Well, out of the three of the ladies, he picked oh, me, and I'm like, oh. how is this happening? This okay. is insane. Okay, that's all right. So you got so any plans for that? What do you, what, you know, uh, how, no, what's still, your mindset? Yeah, I don't know. I'm still in shock. Um, <laughs> Because he's a young and he's a baby. I'm like, oh my goodness, I would break you. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, he still has his he still has his warranty from the factory. I'm like, what oh, am I really? doing here? Goodness yeah, he's young. Uh, uh -oh. But apparently, I had the right answers. Uh, you know, <laughs> no, one of the questions was, "What do you do that other women don't do?" Okay. And I said, "I'm never going to ask you what you're thinking." <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. Well, that's that's a, I guess that's a good question for some men. Yeah. Well, you other know, men, men is like a default answer. Nothing. <laughs> right. But, exactly. Yeah. You know. You know. And the younger they are, the more they panic. Like, oh, was I supposed to be thinking something? Do I have to share my feelings? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to spare you all of that. I'm just going to assume there's music playing. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. fine. And if you want to share a thought with me, you will. Because women overcomplicate men all the time. Like you guys say what you mean and you mean what we you mean what you say. Women that boggles our minds. It's like, what does he mean by that? What he said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's taking me this long to get to know that and then I'm still single. You know, I gotta say I don't miss the dating scene at all. Um Fortunately for me, me and my wife, we, I mean, she finishes my sentences. Um, That's the way it yeah, should be. Yeah, we're, we're pretty good most of the time. And then, you know, so uh, every now and then I, I'm wrong. <laughs> well, wait, I'm always wrong. I should get to the pull cord. Sorry, my fault. I'm sorry. My fault. Just every time you pull that little right. cord, I say something else. I'll be better. I'll do better. I'll lift it. I'll put it back down. <laughs> Whatever it may be. But no, I'm actually I, a good house husband. I, you know, I put the seat down. I help do dishes. You know, I'm trained. I, I, 
I think the phrase, uh, you might be right, is good on both <laughs> sides. Yeah. Ah, really? And that that and I know this is blasphemy for women right. because we're supposed to always be right. But yeah. I, I remember one of my girlfriends said that and I said, How unfair is that? That it when you say that you're making him wrong all the time. How does that feel? And she was mm. like, Gender traitor. I'm like, I'm just saying. <laughs> you can't how are you gonna make a man feel bad all the time? Eventually he's gonna go to a woman that makes him feel good. So you need to stop doing that. There you go. Good thinking, good thinking. See, that's I like that. Yeah, fortunately for me, I mean, me and mine are wonderful. So, uh, all right. So, a, a dating show for you, and uh, yeah, and then what so, is that? What do you got going on next week? More more stand up? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I I think I have shows. Yeah, I have a show. I have another show Monday. I've got some other stuff for the rest of the week. I haven't posted everything yet though. Awesome. Um, but yeah, um, I can't. I can't. This is like a thing now. Like I'm I, the, I'm in a square. Right, you're doing it from home, right? And you're building up this thing. I think it's awesome. I mean, it's yeah. a whole different world, right? Oh, it some is. Some people well, embraced it. Some people I, didn't. Some people didn't. And and mm. and, and it's ever changing. You know, yeah. I, I did get an invitation uh, to do a show, a live stream show, and I thought, you know, it's going to be like this. And you know, mm. when I when I tried to clarify, you know, get all the information, because no, 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 it's at the space. They they, they want you to show up. At a, oh, really? Yeah, it's in How July. weird is that? And yeah, it, how, now think about this. It only took us a space of a few months to think of showing up in person as being weird. <laughs> That's how yeah. we've adapted. Yeah. And I'm horrified. I'm like, and this is a place I've performed many, many times before. Uh, and I'm like really hesitant now. Like, what? Yeah. Actually, I get know. in my car and go and park and be in a building with other people. With other people who may even want to try to touch you. They right. really might. I mean, yeah. And I might want to touch fringe. them. You yeah. might. You may. That's true. Yeah. And how do you how do you restrain that urge? It's like, oh, I yeah. want to hug you. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty yeah. freaked out about it right now. I, I hear you. You know what? I don't even particularly go, oh, oh, you know, me me and the wife, we went to the grocery store yesterday. And, you know, we're here in kind of the southwest of New Mexico or of, of the United States in New Mexico. And, you know, you do get a lot of people who tend to be leaning a little more to the right or whatever. Most of them here, for the most part, seem to play and be playing by the rules. And we were in this grocery store and we walked all through that grocery store. And everybody was wearing masks. That was really wonderful. I'm pretty sure you have to wear masks. It's required to wear a mask. But this one douchebag comes around. I mean, classic douchebag, like you'd see on TV, comes around the corner, he's got his phone. Yeah, I'm doing this thing. Yeah, yeah, we're doing this thing. And there's no mask in his hand. There's no mask. There's no mask. There's no, you know, it's not like he had one and took it off. So, he, I mean, he was just walking around and it was, it was uh, unsettling. It was uh, surreal. It was almost like you were in a movie. And isn't that weird how, just like you said, in just the span of a few short months, you know, I, I remember a couple of months ago, was it a couple of months even, I went out for the first time with a mask on and I'm making posts going, oh my God, look at me, I got a mask on. And now I'm like, <laughs> look, there's some bastard over there without a mask on. What the hell? You know, me and the wife, she just looks at me. I turn her, she look at me and I see those eyes and she's internally, she's eviscerating this gentleman. Um, so yeah, and I, you know, I, it's just, the world has changed. The world it has changed. changed, you know, in a, in another life or at another time, uh, one of my desires was to get my master's in sociology, mm. you know, the, the, the study of human behavior on, on, on yeah. our culture on some levels, this time here has, will be just a treasure trove of things oh, to yeah. study how yeah. we've, you know, uh, domestically and internationally adjusted our behavior, mm -hmm. changed what we think of as normal, you know, how we behave and interact with each other. I mean, hell, I might go back to school just so I could do this thesis. <laughs> True <laughs> enough. It yeah. is fascinating. This, yeah, yeah. And it will be for, uh, we've got, I mean, unlike some parts of our history where things have happened, we've got social media and technology and we're going to record every second of you know, um, and somebody's some people are going to be ashamed later. You're going to be ashamed, people. Those of you, you know who you are. It's coming. You're going to be ashamed of yourself later. Whenever people go, look, this is what you well, do. You know, those people who back in the 50s were holding up the signs saying, keep blacks out of our stores and whatever mm -hmm. they were doing. Those people would, I think, have felt shame in the 80s and 90s and 2000s and blah, blah. Oh, you know what I mean? Sure. 
Um, so these people, yeah. So hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, you know what it is. Um, hmm. pe- the human brain is amazing, and yeah. those things that are painful, <laughs> those things that are shameful, those things that it's like, oh, I was on the wrong side of history. Um, right. They don't even phrase it in their mind that way. They just don't talk about it. Right. That's true. That's or true. they do a little bit of revisionist history, like, yes, I marched. No, no, you weren't there. You That's weren't right. there. That's right. You didn't make yeah. a sign. You didn't get a paper cut making your sign. Like, <laughs> you weren't there. Okay. I, I want to because we can. And I, I, anytime you want to come back and cover this topic at length, I would love to talk to you about that. But I have other questions for you that I don't want to miss the opportunity to ask wow. you while I have you on the show. And Cynthia sure. McDonald may show up as well. And we may nerd out on oh, some Doctor Who or something. However, you are actually, and, and for those who are not aware, I, I got my bat lift in the background. So <laughs> we've, uh, Leanne, jealous. there you go. Leanne and I have discussed it and we have uh, come to the conclusion that anybody that comes on the show that has not seen Star Trek automatically gets the bat lift. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a thing. So let me ask you, you are in Voyager. How far along are you in Voyager? I am in season five. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, no, okay. we're we're cruising along. You know, we're we're you know we're warp five or six here. Right. Um, yeah. I will say season four, uh, the introduction of Seven of Nine and her uh, character arc. Uh, it, I'm still annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, the cat suit's just way too much for me. Like I just like yep. did this woman. I'm thinking of the actress. Did she even get to eat? <laughs> that's a good question yeah you know was yeah. she fed intravenously you know like how do you what yeah. and and why is she the only one wearing heels <laughs> what? well you know she's actually part of the deal i believe on this and i could be wrong i'm uh, it, but she's actually quite short um okay. and yeah so they they do what they can to make her look taller more taller and more imposing than she really is but she's i think she's like five four or five, five. I, I don't know but she's not oh. she's no five eight or five ten or five eleven like you would think okay i could be wrong oh, let me look taller. her up I got then, the power um, she's taller than janeway um especially with the heels <laughs> especially with the heels. i'm like why are we running around on voyager in heels like why is this necessary anyway um yeah. so yeah i'm annoyed by the cat suit still i'm annoyed by the heels uh i'm five eight really, really, five eight five eight that's, season that's I'm not bad seven. That's no, not bad. That's not yeah. short. I'm six that's three. That's a little Sorry, above sure. average. Oh. Um, I I love her science competency. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they're lucky that they got a drone that did that and didn't spend time cleaning. Yes, <laughs> yes. She they they traded out. Uh, and I don't mean this to disrespect Jennifer Lean, the the actress at all. She right. did her part, yeah. but they traded out a useless character. For an extremely useful character, regardless of their clothes, I mean, but, but I mean, well, yeah, because well, Seven like of Nine was, outfits. oh they yeah, she cute. was cute. She's a little elf. She's our little space elf. elf, right? Yeah. Um, but let's not sleep on Kess's intelligence. Um, I believe she had uh, what's that called an eidetic memory. Like any time the mm-hmm. doctor gave her something, you know, she would read it, study it. Boom, she had it. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. she was incredibly smart. She was. I, I mean, she wasn't seven of nine smart. So that if they put her in in medical, I believe she that knowledge or that ability would have transferred just as well had they put her in engineering. Yeah. There was no reason to have her there because they had Belana. Right. Well, and see, that's part of the deal. They didn't. There was really no reason to have her in medical because they had the doctor. You know, but so, they also needed a backup. The, I think you always need a backup to the EMH. Yeah. The EMH was there to back up the real doctor who died episode one. Right. But oh. I mean, throughout the remainder of the show, there was no backup outside of Tom Paris, his level yeah. one medic skills. And the doctor seemed to get for he to many people. He's their favorite doctor. And of course, once he gets um, I don't it's, um, I don't know where you're at and I don't want to spoil anything for you. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Well, he has his hollow okay. emitter. <laughs> I was going to ask us once he gets the 29th that. century. Well, he got it in yeah. the 21st and 20th century, 21st century. 20, yeah. Yes. That he picked up from that was from the 29th century. And now he's, you know, 
going on weight right. missions. He's a, you know, hip, hot, happening guy. Yes. You know, I, you know, I really, <laughs> okay, so for those of you, I, well, everybody knows, I ain't gonna go through the whole that. But, you know, I really enjoyed how he went from being stuck in the, um, the yeah. medical bay to being able to go to the holodex. Mm-hmm. And then some, what was it, Hirogen, I think, or somebody took over the ship and then he could roam a little more of the ship than yeah. just the holodex. And then he got his mobile emitter. And then this guy was just, I mean, he, I, honestly, he is one of my favorite characters slash actor combinations in the entire series really? I, I really enjoy the doc yeah yeah the doctor yeah he's one of my favorites he's so dynamic and funny and he plays a just a bang on straight man you know yes. so yeah he's no, just the, phenomenal his moments it, they're just moments when he's just so annoying though it's that like, is true <laughs> so folk, like he, he's incredibly focused on what he wants mm-hmm. oh, to the exclusion yeah. of other things Yes. Um, and I guess I find that annoying because I do that. <laughs> well, no, you're I absolutely that right. That annoy me is probably because I do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there were characteristics of his programmer, like his hair and his personality. Right. And then we see the programmer and we find out, well, you know what? The, the programmer's a jerk. And now we know right. Zimmerman, right? Dr. Zimmerman? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Zimmerman's uh-huh. a jerk. He's the one that programmed him. And now we know why the doctor's a jerk. I, I get that. Yeah. But he's, but you can, when you juxtapose his, uh, his programmer with who he has grown to be. That's true. You know, because yeah. the program was like, what do you, what do you mean you're, you're learning things about yourself? What do you mean you're adjusting your program? What do you mean you're That's listening right. to music? What? That's right. Have you seen the Have you seen the episode with the updated? Um, yes, I was just going to mention that with Andy um, Dick. Isn't it Andy Dick? I think so. Oh, I love that episode. Hilarious. That's one of my favorite episodes. Oh it's my just... god, they just queened out. Mm, they did. <laughs> you, okay. you know, there's one of those few times in and well, I mean, they happen often. You know, where Star Trek, you know, you'll see a microphone in the background, or you'll see something over here. You'll see a reflection of the director in a panel. Okay, in that episode. There's one deal where both doctors, holographic doctors, are on the bridge, mm-hmm. and they're they're on the con stations doing stuff. Ticket, 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 ticket. And one of them, uh, you know, you see Andy Dick on the left, I believe, and the doctor on the right. And uh, the doctor, we, we zoom in on the doctor. He says, "Go do something," and we see Andy disappear. And then we see the doctor, and then we see the spot where Andy is. And then you see Andy go, "I did it." So instead of fading him in, you actually see the actor come back in, you know, where they had shot him instead of, you know, him just appearing as. So that's one of the I I love that stuff. Uh, That's one of my favorite episodes in the entire universe. I love that. that Yeah, that was. And and, and again, I many of these, just like with DS9, uh, I didn't see real time for whatever reason. So so many of these are brand new for me. So okay, it, it, it's like getting to enjoy it for the first time uh, That's in, in many ways. So, yeah, it really is. It's a nice treat. And I I, I, I keep, you know, ragging on Seven of Nine, and I, I don't mean to. Uh, I like her growth, but, man, I no. wouldn't trust this chick with a phaser <laughs> or a tricorder. I mean, because it, it, there's so there's so many back-to-back episodes where she does nothing but disappoint Janeway. And yeah. do like, like you should be in Star Trek jail. What? Yeah. Like, yeah. Why would you trust her again with any level of power? It's like, okay, back to your alcove. All right, I forgive you. Yeah. What? You know, <laughs> that's a really good point. And they, they have that dynamic. Now, one of the things that helped play on that dynamic was my, and this is my understanding, other nerds. All right. So we've already, you and I discussed how Ryan was, you, you did know she was resistant. She was hesitant to be Seven of Nine. I think she had actually had to. In, several times approached her to get her to be seven of nine for some of the reasons why you have problems and for the summer some of the reasons why um kate mulgrew is that how you say her name uh janeway the actress who plays Mm -hmm. janeway she had those same problems with seven of nine the cat suit the sexualization of women she didn't want to be over sexualized in anything so you know so she didn't want to be over sexualized Uh, there wasn't a lot to over sexualizing balana um, not, you know what I mean? Or Kess, really. Kess, you know what I mean? So they brought in this, I don't know, it's just, it didn't go well for them trying to. And so the tension between the actress who played um, Janeway and um, the actress who played 
Seven of Nine was, my understanding, real. She didn't care for her being there. She didn't want Seven of Nine. She thought she was a sexualization of the... And it's my understanding it took those two ladies several seasons to get over that. Um, but I, I could be wrong. That's just some lore I think I saw somewhere. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I've heard that lore, and I've, I've yeah. heard arguments on both sides that uh, it was that was a PR thing. It wasn't real. Other people going, no, yeah. Janeway was really the actress was really terrible to her, um, and that you know whatever it was they made up or yeah. you know. But I, 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 don't I so I don't I don't know what the real story is. But that sounds completely believable or yeah. plausible. Um, yeah. I should say. <laughs> But well, you know, um, Voyager, Voyager. I, I enjoy Voyager. There's characters on Voyager. Voyagers were the first one where I kind of started going, man. There's, I just really don't like this character. Uh, well, I, I say that I'm, I don't want to go there. Let me not. It was let me getting not you go ready, there. Getting you ready for Enterprise. <laughs> it was getting me ready for anyway. Well, there were certain things like Harry Kim's character. Harry Kim, or the character of Harry Kim, played by Garrett Wang. Garrett Wang played Harry Kim perfectly. Harry Kim, though, his character was strong in certain areas, weak in others, and went seven seasons as an ensign and never accelerated. I, Tom Paris went from a, a non-commissioned officer to an ensign, to a lieutenant, back down to an ensign, back to a lieutenant. You know, I mean, this whole time he got, but the seven years, the character of Harry Kim never, never really developed that much. He I never think. got promoted? Oh, yeah, no. See, I, I know that you've already seen this show, <laughs> but like you said, some of it's new to Yeah, he never. It yeah. New, and it was a long time ago. I mean, this was the 90s. That's true. Yeah, he never got promoted. His character never really did anything. That's Other the characters, like thing. Tuvok, uh, there's certain actors, though, who really, the guy, the actor who played Tuvok, I can't remember his name right off. Um, Tim he did Russ. A, Tim Russ. Yes, he did a wonderful job. If you go back and watch DS9, you'll see Tim Russ as a, a Klingon? A, he was a Klingon, yeah. So he he kind of plays several of those others. I really enjoy him. So yeah, he did, and he did a great job as a Vulcan. He was one of those who uh, always had, you know, like we talked to, we talk about Riker who had these signature moves. Who he walked like the Duke, waha, and he stepped over the chairs <laughs> all the, the time. The captain, yes, Captain the, Morgan, up. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there was that, um, and we had some of that in Voyager too, um, with. Um, well, Tom Paris did it. Garrett Wang. Who who else was on there? Um, who were we talking about just before I mentioned? Oh, we were talking about Tuvok. Oh, I'm sorry. Tuvok. Yes. Yeah, so Tuvok, you'll see him and he'll say, okay, I'm going to go do it. And then he'll bob his, he like bobs his head towards the camera and then, or towards the direction he's not going to go. You know, he'll and I walk away. He, watch him. He does it oh all the time. Goodness. Every freaking scene. He, he does. He'll, like and he's just got this it. like. Like a Muppet, this little head. He'll he'll nod his head one way before he goes the other. Okay, Captain, I'll do it. I love it. I love it. Oh, my goodness. And he does it all the time. Now whether that you it be, said that, I yeah. see it, and now I can't unsee it. Just doesn't matter where he's going to go. His head kinda, I, of course, I love Tim Russ, brother, if you're watching. I love you, man. I love you like That's a brother. But hilarious. Air hug. But I, I saw that in you. That was awesome. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a lot of fun. <laughs> And, you know, he he shows up in several other places throughout Star Trek. He played uh, Without His Ears in um, Star one Trek. One of the movies. Yeah, he did one it, of the wasn't movies. Wasn't he a helmsman or something? Yep. <clears throat> yep. And they actually kind of played on that. I think, I think if I remember correctly in Voyager, they did an episode where he or, or Janeway goes back in time to that episode on the ship. And Tim Russ is now, his character has been turned into a Vulcan. Oh. And you know, because they, they just they just in the original movie that he didn't have ears. That's kind of the only difference, you know. But but yeah, if, right, if I remember yeah. right, you'll see that episode coming up shortly. I do believe. Yeah. No, I I love that she has this thing about time travel. Like she's like, I'm not going to be one of those captains. I'm going to avoid it. And here we are <laughs> again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and get caught in a big one. You know, That's... I I find that oh. hilarious. That she doesn't want that type of adventure, and it's like, no, you don't get to call that. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the Year of Hell yet? Yes. No, yeah. their version yeah. of 2020. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was a good episode. Yeah, with uh, Red Jackass. What's his name? Red. Red. Uh, 
Oh, man, the actor from that 70s show, Red something. His name's not Red. The character on the 70s show is Red. The actor's name is... Somebody will tell us in the chat because they're awesome people. Yeah, I didn't um, watch that show. I didn't like the whole decade. I couldn't wait for that. <laughs> it was a blur. A couple, well, but yeah, I, he did. I, I, yeah, I hated it. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> I did. So where where are you in the seventies? I actually thought, wow, well, from what I remember of the seventies, a lot of people like the seventies. I was my little. I, I was like, yeah, that was the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, okay. Like I'm short and I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I need to grow. Yeah, yeah, true enough. All right, so so you're you're in season seven. Let me ask you. No, um, I'm I in got a text. Five. I'm, I'm five. In I'm sorry. Five. Five. You know, yes, okay. you said that. I was testing you. You passed. Um. Cynthia McDonald has responded. Unfortunately, she's busy and won't be able to make it. She wasn't, you know, it was last minute. I thought, you know, I'm just Kurtwood Smith. Thank you, Brain Bug. Um, I was just going to throw that out there just in case she could, but she she was going right. to try, but she couldn't make it. So it's just, it's well, up to like, me and you. You invited me, you know, to, to possibly join on Monday. And I, I remember waking up at 9.30 going, yeah, I guess not. <laughs> no, nah, that's not out. <laughs> no, we had, we had a wonderful show. I sleeping well. It's been, ugh. Yeah, I don't, yeah. No, no, no. It's la it's those last minute thingies, you know. And uh, I'm changing the show a bit. A bit. I'm gonna actually. I'm literally changing the name of the channel to the damn show. Oh, um, be okay. Because the damn show. I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's more rather than the Daily Atheist. And I'll okay. put my because I do like weird Shakespeare stuff, and I do um, Evil God Monster of Abraham scripted videos and all that. I'll do that all over on my Chris Mallard channel. I have a Chris Mallard channel, and the Daily Atheist will be just more focused on the show because this is all okay. we do here is the show. So I'm wow. gonna call it the show. I mean, my mind is blown that you can have multiple YouTube channels. I'm like, oh, I can't. Yeah. I can barely get one. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what? I, I get the YouTube channel. I think I'm doing okay on the YouTube channel. I'm growing it pretty well. I don't get Facebook at all. Um, I, I got we streamed to like eight or ten different Facebook groups. I don't. I see a couple of people. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if don't, my Facebook is following is growing or not. I don't know how to use it to tell. Well, I'm actually very disenchanted with the because uh, I have my, there's my personal page, which is fine. You uh -huh. know, it's how I stay in touch with everybody. I find out whose grandma passed away. You know, it's uh -huh. that way. Um, but my page, my fan page. You know, Facebook kind of changed the rules um, mm. a little while back. So you can post something. I can post something on my on my page, but not everybody who's a fan of my page sees it. So the, what they want you to do is is pay for advertising to reach the people who are already on your fan page. So I'm I'm really not a fan of of that. Mm. Um, and I'm, I question the investment. Like I get my, much more traction out of uh, Twitter and um, Instagram. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. You know? But, it's, but yeah. it's weird. It's kind of like you still have to have that presence. Yeah. It's like, oh. Absolutely. Oh. See, it's all a mystery to me. I'm learning. I just, I put it all out there as best I can. And because I'm a nerd, I got some nerding skills, but it just, I don't know. My channel growth has done pretty good I, I do okay but again when it comes to facebook not a clue i just stream to it hope for the best i pray yeah, <laughs> that i get some well, good viewers on, over there but i don't know if they're really there or not I, I think one of the things about facebook is also one of the things about linkedin and people don't realize that it's the engagement mm. you know are you you know if you're just posting business stuff people won't necessarily oh, right. are you also doing personal are you also commenting on other people's things are you yeah. it's, it's like building an, a, a virtual relationship right. well um, facebook is actually my biggest platform socially that i use so that okay. where i post the most stuff uh, but i do post a lot of work stuff yeah but if you wanted to find platforms where you, you if you go you'll see almost solely work text or here's a shirt or here's a show coming up or something like that mm -hmm. That's going to be Twitter and Instagram. That's all I, I you know. But I'm even not, on I'm Instagram, there. it's like if all, like I can't post just shows. No. You know, that, no, oh, right. you, you can, but that's not building a relationship. Oh, no. It's like people don't want to be advertised to right, all right. the time. All so the time. I that's feel right. the, the ratio is give them good content, 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 whatever yeah. that content is for you. If it's music, if it's comedy, if it's, you know, great memes, whatever you're doing. And then, yeah. oh, hey, by the way, I have a show. Yeah. You know, yeah. and those are, and I, I'll tell you, even even in posting those, just be, you know, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, those don't get the most uh, views or likes or whatever because it's an ad. Right. It's basically an ad, you right. know. And if you're gonna go or watch, you'll go. Um, but it's also this reminder of, hey, you guys, this is also this is what I do. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really providing 
uh, humorous content in the midst of madness. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, you know, uh, I want to change the subject real quick. Sure. From from Star Trek. I know. <gasps> I know, and it's the, it's not necessarily. I know. I've uh, I, I may have had a stroke. I'm not sure. Uh, no, no um sci-fi saturday we can sci-fi talk about saturday. anything well the, i, I want to prepare myself i want to ask miss leanne what else do you like besides i remember we've talked vague a little bit about shh, doctor who mm-hmm. um have you seen stargate yet stargate is one of my favorites it's just just the, I, the series is the not series, the movie right. necessarily i haven't i mean i watched it years ago many moons um, many many moons ago and i think i left off like season five and mm. they're like they're like save it 78 seasons so, oh yeah 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 right well there's so, yeah, yeah that's a tough row it's, it's been it's been a while like i it's been so long i would probably have to if not back to the first season maybe at the third season just to sort mm. of yeah know, refresh myself on the characters yeah you know if i were me i would uh not watch the movie because <laughs> you know the premise of the movie right because the movie for me is kind of a hard watch the movie is a little bit of a turn off yeah i mean you're welcome you know what I, I i urge you to go ahead and experience it for yourself but when you're done with voyager go what prepare i want to watch stargate and then watch that first movie it's it's i mean i like it i like it it's just hard it's hard i don't know <laughs> it's a hard watch Dune was a hard watch. You know, you I need know. to go back and watch that because I believe you're, you know, I mean, it was great when I was a kid, but yeah, I'm afraid it's going to be a hard watch. I don't know if it was great when I was a kid. Well, I, I was, I was intrigued. Oh, well, I never read the book. What am I watching? Right. And that made me read the book. And I think oh, I that's kind of what started me off on the path of reading the book before seeing the movie mm. and then learning that they are two different things. Occasionally they mesh. Yeah. Like with you know some of Stephen King's work, that well, 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 most of Stephen King's stuff doesn't translate, but right. the really, really good stuff does. Like you know, Shawshank Redemption. Um, oh God, what's the other one with the magical? Um, oh, it's the guy that's on death row. I don't remember. But you know, but his horror. The Green stuff, Mile. The Green Mile. Thank you. That's a wonderful uh, movie. But the book was so good. The book was, was really it? good. It was, um, but I, I'm, I'm not. I'm very biased. I'm a Stephen King fan. Oh yeah, me too. I, I enjoy. You know, I uh, some of his stuff is really when you accept it like in miniseries form, it's wonderful. If you think I want to sit down here and watch a Stephen King movie, and you get into this really long thing, that can be rough. But but oh, they I tried love that his with work. The dome. They tried that with the dome on yeah. ABC. I didn't watch it. Under the dome. I love the introduction. You know, whenever they drop the dome on there for you guys who haven't seen it. I mean, there's this little little podunk town. They drop a dome over it. I think if I remember right, it's uh, the guy who plays. Um, oh man, from Breaking Bad. The uh, anyway, he uh, there's a cow there, and this sheriff is sitting there, and this cow is literally split in half by this invisible dome that's dropped over the city because that cow happened to be right on the line where the dome appeared. And so he's like, and then you look over and the cow just falls up in half like that. There's a plane flying along, hits the, it's a little airplane, hits the dome. And then, you know, uh, they, it's one of those things when I knew it was a, a Stephen King movie. I watched the first couple episodes and I was Steve in a series, but I was like, mm-hmm. nah, it's, I stopped watching it. There was yeah. no, oh, I, don't, I didn't watch it all. Yeah, I, I, I knew there was no there. good ending coming to this. We're never going to learn. There's never, never going to be a satisfying, oh, that's what put the dome there. And that's why they did it. And, you know, I heard later on, I heard, I never watched it, had something to do with some alien's kid was playing with a toy and turned on a dome over here. You know, it was something really stupid like that. Well, it's, it's kind of like know. it. It's like, really? Do, okay. Big spider? Big Big spider. Life? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I, okay. So now with it, you got to forgive me. I don't know a lot about the original book uh, or the original movie. I haven't seen that in a long, I've not, I saw it oh, when wow. I was a kid, I think, okay. but all I've seen is the new one. And I, I didn't really think of it as a spider so much as a magical creature that kind of resembles a spider. Yes. Okay. That, that, to be fair. 
No, um, but was it really a spider in the old? I mean, I don't know what's going oh, on. It's more what you said, magical creature that kind of looks oh, like a spider. Oh, oh, because like, really? because he asked him, "Do you want to float?" And I was like, "What do you mean float?" And of course, he's got the oh, balloon, right? So you think all, about floating yeah. like a balloon, but that's not what he meant. His he's got this floating rotisserie. <laughs> You know, at the oh. end, have, you haven't seen the new It movie? Oh, See, well. all I've seen of re recent is the new one. Oh, am I thinking? There was one that they redid with the kids. Yes, that's the, they did They did It, and then they've done a second one. The second one. I did not see the second one. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't um, seen it either. I will say, I, I used to do this thing um, a few years ago where I would pick what oh. my summer read was going to be. And a few a few years ago, I was having a Stephen King summer. Okay. And I had I, I, I said, Look, I'm going to read it. Actually took the book out of the library. I'm like, I thought I was going to breeze through it. I'm like, I had to renew and renew. <laughs> it was not a fast read for me. I'm like, it, it's thick. It, like, the paperback right. is like really thick. Yeah. And I forgot how scary it was. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, Kelly, let's see. Kelly is asking about it. We were talking about it. We all float, I think is what it's. Yeah. Okay. I missed, float, it's been yeah. a while. Now, tons of mice. We all float down here. Is that what he says? Well, yeah. It well, because it's in the sewers. He got, yeah. He's oh, trying to entice oh, the children into the oh, sewers. Come, we all, we well, all float. And the, oh, yeah. All oh, Pennywise. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, at the end of the, the new movie, it, the, his, victims he's half eaten them and they literally float in the air in this certain room oh. and so you he's asking them do you want to float you're going to get to float too and that's what he's talking about okay so okay. at the end that's what i got from it. at the end of it you see all of his you, know, you see these partially eaten bodies and you see him as a real spider creature there yeah. um somebody a uh, tons of mice said it is a, it's an alien it is an alien it's an alien. Yes. So uh, that's very interesting. I may have to go. I, I enjoyed that movie. I watched it alone. I was scared. I was alone and scared. Um, I've, I've thought about watching it with the wife in case she might be interested in seeing I'm going to do the, do the Tuvok maneuver. Sorry. I'm watching my head up there as I talk. <laughs> Tim no, Russ, again, if you're watching. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> it's, it's funny that I, you know, I love Stephen King. I hate horror movies. I can't. Oh, really? Really? What a what an mm -hmm. odd combination. It really it's is. It's like being a vampire that can't stand the sight of blood. Yes. That's and I love vampire <laughs> movies. Love <laughs> vampire movies, vampire storylines. I'm I'm here for all of it. Uh, mm. But yeah, no, there's something about horror movies. I, I used to watch them, but I think I lost my nerve. Yeah, really? Like, it took me forever to watch Hellraiser. Oh, really? And, oh, forever. I think the movie was out like 10 years before I decided to mm. watch it. Broad daylight, you know, <laughs> curtains open, right. <laughs> lights on, pause button in hand. It, it, it was just really? too much for me for yeah. whatever reason. I have no idea. You know, I remember being a little kid, little kid, 13, 12, 13, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, the Friday the 13th movies were coming out and mm -hmm. Jason was a thing and all that. Mm -hmm. And, and like the ones you said, Hellraiser, and um, there were a couple Warlock and things like that. And Phantasm. I watched, yes, yes. I watched. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, the Poltergeist. I watched a few of these things, and I soon realized as a child I did not enjoy horror movies, and I don't like being scared. And right. it's generally not something I I tend to go. You know, I do enjoy a good like it. I watched it, I enjoyed it, but you won't see me going, "Ooh, where's the horror movies? I need to go find." You won't find me cruising through the horror movie section of no. Netflix. It never no. ever happens. Now, if I find a science fiction movie like Pandorum, that's a kind of good science fiction movie. They're on a ship and. And um, it's got some cool actors and it's really, the end is really awesome. Um, and it's kind of a horror kind of movie. And I'll sit there and watch that sucker over. I haven't watched that in quite a while. Um, I really enjoy that one, but, but I don't enjoy it necessarily because of the horror. I enjoy it. The horror is there because of the story. Right. You know, not the story being there because of the horror, which is the way it is with a lot of other movies. They just do things to make you jump out of your chair. I don't right. care for that. And I, yeah, I don't, you know? I don't like that. My, my life yeah. is, is kind of edgy enough. Right. Everybody. Yeah. I don't if you're going to, yeah. Scared. If you're going to throw a scene up with a cat screeching, can, watch how often you'll actually see the cat screeching out of nowhere scenes in a horror movie. That's whenever you're going, you are like a base, the very base of what it is to be a horror director. <laughs> if you're throwing a cat scene in there like that, you got nothing else. 
I'm just saying. That's my like, horror directors everywhere going, never hire this man. Anyway, right. so. And, I, and I, also, I also make the distinction between um, scary and gory. I really mm. don't like gory. Like, I've never seen Saw. One, me two, neither. three, 17, none of it. No. Nope. None of them. Me either. Packing up people? Nope. I'm not watching that. <laughs> you know, I watched as close to that as I can think I could. I watched Dexter, like an episode, a season I or something of Dexter. Dexter. The books um, are hilarious. Really? Yeah. But yes. I never. I mean, it, it, I like what I liked about Dexter had nothing to do with the blood. It had to do right. with his personality and the yes. all those things. And of course, the vengeance was delicious. But you know, whenever you know he's going to kill somebody who's a murderer, that's kind of I like that. That's I, I did too. Yeah. I did too. If 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 under the dictionary it says karma, see this show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking about I, I. I'm not even sure. I think I might have seen a few episodes, but I wasn't dedicated. I read the, again. I read the books, and I was satisfied. Um, yeah. With that, yeah, I'm that girl. And I'm like, oh wait, there's a book, like Game of yeah. Thrones. I read the book oh, uh, really? as when season one came out. I was reading the book, and I was re trying. It was literally like trying to read fast enough to stay ahead <laughs> of the series. And then you know, once really? they took a break between season one and two, I read everything. Really. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> So, uh, I, let me see. Are you, where do you fall in the camp of? All right, let me. <laughs> the Game of Thrones was one of the first six seasons was amazing. The seventh season just blew my mind. Or the seventh season was controlled by a bunch of drunk morons who didn't know what the hell. Had they even bothered to watch the show? I've seen different reactions from different peoples about how the game of thrones ended what do you how do you feel about that i see from your face you you probably have an opinion about the last season i'm surprised uh, you haven't read my thesis on this no <laughs> <laughs> let, I have let me not. go get my left turn and let's go to church on game of thrones no you know we um, could do a game of thrones i need to watch it so i've never watched it no well, i don't want to because this do last do season sucks sorry no, but go ahead you no know, sometimes the last season of a lot of shows sucks sometimes the first <laughs> season sucks you know what yeah, are we doing with our time here on the planet that's true um, that's true 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 it was actually eight seasons eight seasons okay okay yes and you know gotcha. that eighth season was an abomination an abomination right for male understood these these people should be hung from the from <laughs> and water from the highest tree in the land. I'm just like, what are you doing? I, I remember I just, I had this rant. I'm like, this is what you do with my love. This is what you do with seven seasons of my love, my dedication, my loyalty. This is what you do with it. You just take it and throw it away. <sighs> I feel you. That's like this half of discovery. Remember, I like parts of discovery. There's a lot of parts I, just, I don't like because it's offending my Star Trek. That's how I feel. I feel you. So I haven't I, seen season. I haven't seen the uh, Game of Thrones, but you're speaking to I my soul. I was angry. Oh angry. my god, man! Because listen, I watched the show real time, and now mind okay. you, that's you know, I it, it, just looking back, I'm like, wow, that was two boyfriends. <laughs> like that, <laughs> you know, I remember season seven. Like that was my thing. You don't you don't call me on Sunday. We not we're not making no plans. My plan is to watch Game of Thrones. I wasn't doing gigs on Sundays. I was like, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I can't I can't do that show game because I wasn't gonna watch it later. I'm right. watching this real time. Uh yeah. and I remember I was getting all comfortable season seven. I'm you know, in my in my chair and they go, and next week on the on the season closer, what? Y'all have only done seven episodes. How are we closing on eight? Now, from a Star Trek point of view, I'm used to 23, 24 episodes. What are y'all? Right. You couldn't even do 12. You couldn't muster it up for 12. I was just so right. offended. I'm like, I planned my, the rest of my season, my financial right. fiscal quarter. <laughs> so you're saying season out. eight is only eight episodes? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, season eight is short. Wow. Okay, so at least the it pain so won't last happen. long. So was seven. It, oh, really? it was, and then what they did did with characters, and they just ruined oh. character development. And they, oh. they 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 ruined when you read the book. 
or if you've read the books or you're watching the, the, the first few seasons of the show, you get a sense of the scope of how far things are from each other. Like mm -hmm. Winterfell uh, uh, is quite a distance away from King's Landing, which is quite okay. a distance away from, um, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of that other land. It'll come to me in a minute. Um, so it would take half a season maybe a full season for people to travel from one place to another, you know, horseback by sea, you know, really by season eight, it was like, okay, we're going to war. Click. They're there. What? Uh, really? Cross. Wait, what? Wow. It, it, yeah. So even the convention of travel, you know, they, it, they cause they were, rushing it was their own sport drive. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was jarring. I'm like, what, what? It, please don't get me started on this chick and her dragons. <laughs> that's all I know about this show. <laughs> really, that's all. I, well, and then and Cersei sleeps with all her brothers or something. She has three babies by her brother. You know, there's a lot of incest. Just, you know, biblical, probably and holy. You know I am. Wow, what a bitch. Um, <laughs> Which one? There, uh, Cersei Lannister. Oh, okay. Oh, Cersei. Okay. And here, this is what I love about um, uh, the author's work. Uh, George R. R. Martin, you know, you fall in love with characters, they're characters you love to hate, and he makes them real people in the sense that they are complicated. Like this character that you hated for two seasons, all of a sudden your heart is breaking for them mm. by the by the third or fourth season. Like, oh man, that like really? nobody should suffer that way. You know, you understand that if Cersei Lannister were born male, she would have been king. Mm. She had that drive. She had that knowledge. And there was nothing that she could have done that would have put her in the leadership position. You know, so she did the best she could with what she had. Was she still evil and conniving? Absolutely. You know, was she still ruthless? Yes. But how much of that could have been channeled in a productive way mm. had she been male in this, right. in this, you know, still very male dominated uh oh, yeah culture and it was interesting to watch the development of women in this by I've by heard season, that. yeah by season i i want to say it's season seven it might be eight but i i, I began calling it the battle of the bitches because really? everybody that was left was a woman you know and like oh who do i root for all of them <laughs> <laughs> It, you know, it, like with women with power and what they mm. do with it are they necessarily any better than guys maybe they're yeah. not they're yeah. you know it's power well, you know, um, Nakasuchi, hi, Rage, good morning, uh, makes a point here in the chat about the show. He says uh, they rushed it, rushed it because the actor that played Daenerys wanted to quit. They paid her a lot of money to come back for that last season, and it was rushed. Should have been at least another season. So apparently she didn't want to. You can blame her. You know, I, uh, once, I call this the McLean Stevenson syndrome. Mm. Okay. If you, if you remember, uh, he was the first colonel in MASH he was yes. in charge right he wanted to leave the show to do something else mm -hmm. act in other things yes and who what is he? exactly yeah. dude you are on a hit show you are making money do that do that I, I, yes I can't. hey you know all right let's another two denise crosby <sighs> Am I right or am I right, Denise Crosby? Right? What I mean, Denise, if you're watching, you know, you don't. Ha I don't have to say it because you know, she knows. She bumped out of there the first season. That was probably the did worst she, acting. She, is that was that the thing she wanted to do something else? I you know, I don't remember why she she uh, she wasn't feeling her 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 character was developing enough. You know, she wasn't, you know, as, as the security officer, she wasn't getting enough attention or something. I, I don't know. So I'm sure somebody will in the are you, chat. Are, is your name on a door somewhere? Right. Are, are, are the checks clearing? Is somebody on the PA staff coming to get you when it's time to shoot your scene? Is your right. name in the credits? Right. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I subscribe to the Richard Belzer theory of acting. Uh, Richard Belzer, a uh, stand-up comedian, musician. Um, he was on a show called Homicide, mm -hmm. uh, Life on the Street. He was on SVU uh, all, all, all seasons. And I, I really feel his theory, and he played a cop. That's what he did. He plays a cop, both shows. So I feel like 
you know, Richard Bell's just sitting right there. He goes, oh, this show is canceled? Okay, I'm going to sit right here till y'all build the next set for the next show. I'm going to be this character again. It, that's, right. I'm like, right. I don't, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. Take the money. They're going to pay you to yeah. sit there and do three lines? Yeah. And then you still have your life? You still have rec- recognition? That's right. You well, you know, theater in your off time. Come on. That's very true because you got plenty of it, right? <laughs> um, but there were there are other people who've left shows for good reasons, mm, and we're talked to going back for good reasons. First comes to mind is Nichelle Nichols. She wanted to leave. Uh, did I say that right, Nichelle? Yeah, she wanted to leave because she wasn't for the kind of the same reason. Except for in reality, it was true. She was kind of being left over there and not being where where I mean Denise Crosby's character was actually vibrant and went on missions and did stuff. Yeah. She really all all she did was hailing signals open, sir. That was all she did for this for quite a while. And she wanted to leave the show. And it was was it Dr. King that talked her into staying yeah. on the show or going back to the show? Yeah. Like you, you know? have to stay. I don't know what you what what it means to see you there. And That's I'm right. sure Roddenberry also talked to her. Absolutely. And you know, there, so now we've got 30 years later, we've got the new Star Trek coming on. The old Star Trek has made legends of these people. How do you walk away from anything on that show? Like you said, your name is on the door, but it's not just on any door. It's on the door of a legacy. You're going to be, they're going to be legacy. making figures about you for decades, you know? So that's what she walked yeah, away from as far I, as her yeah, case. I don't, I don't understand it, you know? Yeah, me either. I, Throw me a Star Trek role. I will. You'd have to run me off with a stick. Thank you. I'd be showing up that day in my uniform and security going, yeah, you know you got fired. Right. Oh, yeah. Somebody <laughs> might change their mind. Come on, Dad. Right. sick? Anybody call out sick today? I can That's do right. it. That's right. True enough. Beam me in. Beam I got my own bat lift, I'd be saying. And that's probably why they turned me away. <laughs> Your own bat lift. <laughs> <laughs> my own batliff over here my own therapist over there won't talk to me while i hold the batliff that sort of thing yeah yeah no, so I, I just don't see how people well you know there was <clears throat> let's there's another actress and i can't remember her name but she was going to be given the role of janeway and she filmed for like one day and bailed on the show i can't remember her name or where I she went story. i just don't yeah. know who it was. i can't remember so i'm sure the channel put us up there somebody up there she was there for one day um, and then also another person. Now, this next person I want to mention, you can kind of let him slide on this because at the time you didn't know. But the original actor who played Captain Pike mm-hmm. decided not to come back for the show. But again, it was at the time it was just a space western pilot and he didn't know it would ever be taken up or nothing. There wasn't 20, 30 years of history for the show. So I totally don't blame him. But I do expect that in the few short years before he passed away, I would probably think he, he might have regretted yeah leaving that role like the the fifth beetle yeah yes yes but you know i really enjoy what they did with the character i love the fact that they brought the pot the original pilot back in i also love the fact that lucille ball saved the show and that way we have a pilot and a second pilot and a you know just and then that they took it and ran with it made it all good let me ask you let's another change of subject because i'm running i know i'm running out of time of course time flies when you're having fun it sure does where are we wow it really did fly I know. See, I did that. I did this before the second hour. Usually I go, hey, this has been two hours. And you're like, wow, two hours. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, the Blade Runner show? Um, see, I wanted to find out what other Trek you liked so I can maybe find a guest specific in the up- upcoming weeks. Um, well, we, we did, you know, I don't know if you combine sci-fi fantasy. I do love my Stephen King. Um, okay. I do love Dune, uh, Battlestar Galactica. Oh, Battlestar. Is uh, which I haven't rewatched yet. Um, that should probably be my next thing. Mm. Um, yeah, we need to rewatch that. Me and the wife. That's a good one. I, I really enjoy that is, show. I mm. loved the. You know, it, it's almost it remind, it's reminiscent a little bit of uh, the Walking Dead, in oh, the it? sense that well, in in this sense, you know, with the Walking Dead, yeah, zombies, 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 but it's really about the interaction of human beings. Right. Uh, whereas Battlestar Galactica, yeah, silence, silence, silence. Uh, but how are human beings rebuilding society, rebuilding That's society, true. and interacting, and also dealing with a threat? But the real threat is dealing with each right. other. You That's know, a good that point. psychology is fascinating to me. Really? Yeah, I, I like that in the Battlestar. I really enjoy that in the Battlestar. Matter of fact, one of my favorite actors plays Baltar. I just love. He does a fantastic job. Oh, that man I is just love to hate him. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he does that, and then like, anytime they they get they get an actor to scream in pain or do all these things, this guy could cry and scream and sing and dance, and you know, I mean, this guy was just he just amazing. Um, so there was that about the Battlestar Galactica. Um, with the show, what was that other show you mentioned? Um, uh, not Battlestar had the the same tone. Um, oh, um. The Walking Dead. The Walk. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. So with The Walking Dead, um, I've seen like the first couple of episodes of it, mm -hmm. and I got it was really cool how he wakes up and he's there's the dead everywhere and he's going around and then he, at the end of the first episode he goes back to that one dead he saw crawling across the ground and kind of put it out of her misery. That was cool. And then he kind of moves on and he starts catching up with the other people. And the very first thing that happened, I mean, he doesn't even get there yet. He's calling on the radio. Hello, this is Bob. I've survived. Where is everybody? And Bob's ex-partner, Tom, is over there going, oh, there's Bob. Well, I'm with Bob's wife now. I mean, it's that kind of fuck each other over right out of the gate. And I'm, I don't, I don't, no, I don't really care for that. I'm, I don't, I just didn't care for that. So at that point, I stopped and I've denied myself an entirely good show. Uh, so well, I need I, to get on no, the bandwagon. Watch it. I started it late. Like I didn't watch it. And then I did something you're not supposed to do. Like I watched the season finale right, of right. season two. And my friends were like, you can't do that. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what you can do. Just jump in, <laughs> you know, and then, and then stayed in until, um, I call him baseball bat dude. I remember. Um, Egan. I went that first episode of that season, whatever that was, I stopped watching really gotcha. heart couldn't take it because i know human beings suck i know we're a horrible little species mm. and we can do terrible things to each other um mm. i can look out my window and see that i can read the newspaper oh and, yeah and, 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 you know various parts of the world right. and people i'm in so but to see that naked level of mm -hmm. meanness and the yes. I'm, I, in, in my entertainment i couldn't do it I understand. Now I want to. Uh, that's that's something I'm glad you mentioned that. Stargate. I love me some Stargate. I've already encouraged you if you haven't seen it, go yes, back and watch. I One of the things I liked about the Stargate was that you got to see these four characters. They were very much like Star War, Star trek and that they're a team like the bridge of the ship yeah. and they're always out there together if one if one of them is being bad for some reason it's because somebody took them over or there's a yep. good reason why they're being bad and they're mm -hmm. that they're part of a cohesive unit that will do anything episode after episode after episode matter of fact uh stargate was awarded uh some kind of an honor by the air force the U.S. Air Force for representing them in such a good way. They actually got awards from the Air Force because all these people are Air Force and they're yes, all together a good right. unit. Um, right. Yeah, so the, the 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 Stargate actually increased the uh, recruitment for the Air Force. Well, That's a real I'm, deal. And then I'm, they I'm get biased. to <laughs> I'm biased for the Air Force. My dad there you go. <laughs> and oh, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they they really do a good job representing. Matter of fact, they have actual four star generals on the show come in and boss boss the dude around. And then then you got Stargate Atlantis. Stargate Atlantis is a different character, still Stargate, still same kind of thing, same mm -hmm. premise, same feel. They're not all Air Force anymore. They're different countries and all that. Blah blah blah. But it's the same thing. Then you get to Stargate Universe, and it is. Have you seen Stargate Universe? No, I just I, I I remember feeling overwhelmed by the proliferation yeah. of Stargates. I'm like, yeah. what? So what with Stargate like? Universe, there was a ship out there, and in the middle of between galaxies, all by itself, alone, created by the ancients, and a whole bunch of humans go through a Stargate ring out to the ship, and they can't get back and they can't get off. So they're stuck on that oh. ship out there in the middle. So there's military and civilian people, and they do not hesitate to start screwing each other around hurting each other, killing each other, politics, this and that. Matter of fact, the open, opening episode of this show, like before the credits, I mean, I, th I think it's because it's really there at the beginning. There's a sex scene. You don't have sex scenes in Stargate. Now, the original opening season, opening episode, you had a naked woman. They did show a fully frontal nude naked woman in the opening episode of Stargate the next, uh, SG-1. That did happen. But other than that, I mean, you hardly ever talk. That's not really, they don't need that. And they did that right out the bat with the sex. And then it got all drama. And then there's this military guy who's going to, it is absolutely not the shame show. It is, oh, did you turn around? Stab, 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 stab. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't me stabbing you. Oh, stab, stab, stab. You know, I mean, throughout the whole show, uh, it didn't yeah. last. It's like one, one season, maybe a whole season, I think they went. Oh, wow. So, okay. The actors did what? a great job. As a drama, it was more of a drama. 
what's the one? Oh gosh, this is really bad. Uh, it was really popular and got it got canceled. Then Amazon picked it up, and oh, it's 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 a. I want to say it's really cool because I watched it for a little while. My favorite thing on the show is that everybody had cell phones that were orange backlit, and nobody ever plugged in their phone. <laughs> it just oh, really? always worked. I'm um, unfamiliar with that. I, I I feel bad because people love this show, uh, and it's back now. Yeah, okay, uh, I didn't because I, I wanted to go back and, and start watching it again because I did enjoy it. it but it's not something that, um, and it, it was the tension between Earth and the people on Mars and the miners on Mars. Oh, is it? Uh, oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Maybe yeah. yes, the Edge or yes. Something like that, right? Oh man, <laughs> it's right there in my brain I too. That I can't remember it is sci-fi, <sighs> and I haven't had enough coffee. Because because yeah. I wrote this sci-fi manuscript, and in my sci-fi manuscript, I wrote about how humans had we would take these. Uh, Asteroids, and we have a little robot that automatically did all this. It mined the stuff off the asteroid, used the stuff off the asteroid that it mined to build a glass dome and then a processing plant on the asteroid and start growing food on the asteroid. So you've got this little asteroid covered in glass, and you've got these people, you know. And so I open up and I watch this first episode of the show, and they've got this thing that is very similar to what I had just written in my thing. I was very disappointed, and I didn't watch any more of the show. So what I the understand. hell is the name of the show? It's like I Ice Miners. It. No, it's the expanse. The expanse. The edge. I was I was close. You were close. You I were was close. close. Yeah, I actually yeah, had so. to open up my Amazon uh my so private my yeah. So the, I've seen a few episodes of that. Uh, I, I need to go back and rewatch it. That might be a good one. You, so you say they they run it, they cancel it and then another company picks well, yeah, it up? Yeah, somebody else it was I think it was a regular network show. I might be mm -hmm. wrong here. And it got canceled and the the fans freaked out. Like mm -hmm. what okay. are you doing? great great show right. um and then it got picked up by amazon and i fell off because there was a lot of time in between episode in between series oh. Oh, i mean in yeah. between seasons gotcha um, so yeah Hard to keep so up i, I, I kind of yeah i kind of i kind of got lost like i would have to start again not the very beginning but just to you know right to be up on everything that's going because it's it's uh I, it was interesting well, you know, it could be Fox. And I only say that because Fox is just known for picking up shows, uh, really, really good shows. Looking at you, Firefly, and running it, running it out of order, you know, running yes. the episodes and then intentionally killing it whenever, you know, and then making it their cult classics. Firefly is just a wonderful show um, uh, that could have just had legs and gone better. and gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah I know. It was sad. My wash, um, my book. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? We we have done the hour. I'm gonna go do that thing. I'm ready for a little break and vacation. I've got. I'm gonna do the chan channel name some change sometime over the weekend. Okay. So it'll be it'll still everything. Nothing else will change. Most people probably won't even notice. It's just gonna be the damn show instead of the Daily Atheist. And then um, next week, I don't have a lot going on. The week after, we're doing some vacation. I'm gonna go get some surgery. Ooh. So I'm gonna be out of. Uh, I'm gonna be down for a few days. I probably I'm going to use that time to make my vac vacation shows. You know, I'll run streams like we like. I won't call on you one Saturday because I'll have a pre-recorded show that we, you and I've already done, and I'll just drop it up again on the Saturday kind of thing. So as that goes, I'll let you know. I mean, we're not sure on dates and everything. So that's those kind of things are going to happen, and uh, I think that's about it. Do you have anything coming up you want to mention? You can all, you're always welcome to drop links. And I'm I'm a fan, so whenever I see you're doing a show, I like to like and share it. I'm like your own little stalker. I know, uh, I know, and yeah. I so appreciate it. I so appreciate it. Um, I have let's wow, well, I have shows all week. I have shows on Mon I have a show on Monday um, that I will post when I have information about. I'm always on every Tuesday night. I'm on Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. on a show called Tell Me Everything with John Fugel saying so if you have Sirius you can tune in and it's uh, we commentate on you know culture politics whatnot mm -hmm. he usually plays me clips of the latest um speeches or talks oh. from our current president and then we yeah. uh discuss we discuss, discuss. And so that, <laughs> yeah that's fun so then I do that every every Tuesday and then um yeah so and, it, and you gave me a shout out last time on your show thank you for that that's wonderful oh yeah yeah because he's like because he, they he asked me oh, what are you doing on my sci-fi saturday that's what i'm doing <laughs> yeah there you go i'd like yeah so thank you very much for that 
Yeah. Um, otherwise, though, like I said, I don't, to be honest, one of my, as far as, uh, you know, if we talk about the getting burnout on what you do, you know, my burnout comes, I don't, I love sitting here and talking to folks and the technology and getting all this stuff ready and all this stuff. You need to go after the show is over. You need to go back and watch the opening because I made a special oh, opening okay. for us that I think you're going to enjoy. Please, you'll love it. Um, okay. But then, but what, where my burnout comes is in the form of I don't like scheduling and doing all that stuff. So I, I, I avoid it and I put it off. Now I'm sitting here. I got next week. I got no guests, but I got a lot on my mind. I got guest hosts to help me through if I need to. You know what I mean? Right. So that's one of the reasons why I got the guest host. So I don't have to sit here alone. Okay. <laughs> like today. Notice today we didn't have a guest. That's awesome. Not that, not, I mean, sometimes me and you need a guest. You know, we'll get out on topic. Me and most time, me and you don't need a guest. We just talk. No, we just <laughs> Yeah, they just and get I in the way. I'm like, I need to make you small. How do I make just the guests small? Because they talk too much. <laughs> I'm a bad man. Anyway, you know, I heard Vila Bianca might want to be on the show again, so uh, I may invite them for next Saturday. Okay. We see. We'll see. And of course, Cynthia. Um, I'm going to say hi and thank you to everybody and bye and thank you to everybody in the chat. You guys are wonderful. Yes. The Blazing Thank Wizard you. Pope for all your shilling. He's been putting links to my stuff, your stuff, everybody's stuff. You get stuff. You get stuff. Uh, Nana showed up. Everybody, you guys are all wonderful. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful and safe weekend. Check out my new um, end credits that I have created. I've done new end credits. And, but see, I've already know I'm going to extend them a little longer. So I've had some, I'm trying to develop. This, so here we go. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe.